Coming up next on Adventurer, the first father-son astronaut team. More when we return. Welcome to Adventurer, the show where people truly push their lives to the limits. No talking heads here, just the real deals. I'm your host, Jim Clash. In 1973, astronaut Owen Garriott spent 60 days in orbit aboard the U.S. Skylab, then a decade later, 10 days in the U.S. Space Lab. Next year, Owen's son Richard plans to orbit the Earth too, but choosing instead to fly up in a Russian rocket. Richard, thanks for coming on. Uh, thanks for being here. Owen, thanks for coming on. Yes, sir. I'm so excited to have two astronauts on at once, a father-son team. My first question to you, Owen, back in 1973 when you went up to Skylab, mm -hmm. and this was right after you know we had gone to the moon, the Cold War was still on, did you ever think that your son would be going into space with the Russians. Uh, Richard was 12 years old at about that point, uh, so I would never have guessed that. But of course, uh, all of the ensuing things have built on that to make it a real, uh, reasonable possibility and now a uh, likelihood. But how do you feel about the irony in it? I mean, isn't it? I don't consider it ironical. I think okay. that it's great. I okay. think his, his background, his uh, work and effort have uh, already led him to where this is a very reasonable thing for him to do. Now, Richard, you've been, I know you're on the board of Space Adventures, and you've been in line for a long time to do the suborbital space ride with them. Yep. Now you've committed to do the orbital one. $30 million? Yep, $30 million. So it's, uh, in fact, the price tag continues to climb, unfortunately. Go back to when you were 12 years old and your father was up in Skylab. Tell me about that. D did that inspire you to want to go into space? Well, of, of course it did. I mean, uh, and what I think is different for me than uh, the majority of Americans. You know, I, mean, I think there's, you know, if you ask 80% of Americans in polls say they would love to go to space if the opportunity to, was av available right. at a price they could afford. Um, however, uh, you know, I think most people give up on that dream pretty at a pretty young age. I, on the other hand, you know, not only grew up with it uh, seeming even more plausible and more normal, but everyone in the neighborhood I lived in was either a NASA astronaut or somebody related to the space program. Uh, so I grew up you know, believing it really could come true. Uh, and so all of, uh, you know, while my, my vocation is computer games, right. a lot of my personal investing has been in the privatization of space. And so I've been really working toward this goal for decades. And uh, now, now you've you've done some training, right? Already, have you been done the the, the zero G stuff and the MIG stuff and all that? Exactly. So yeah, in the in the in the, in the last uh, you know five or ten years, I've done a lot of that. I've actually done not only the zero G and MIGs to the edge of space right. as you have, yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, but I've also even done the neutral buoyancy tank, where I've done a couple of EVA rehearsals. Uh, but uh, and in fact, this past year, as we've really been preparing for this specific flight. I've already been doing a lot of the medical pre-qualification that has to take place, uh, and then the formal, what I'll call hard training. One thing that we're all terrified of, and I'm a big pro space tourism guy, I want to go up someday, suborbital at least, we're just terrified of, of an accident um, uh, in, involving civilians. It seems like everything's gotten so risk averse, uh, the mm -hmm. thinking in our country versus back in the Cold War. Mm -hmm. How are we going to handle it? Can we survive? There's going to be an accident, right? Uh, I think that's quite true. And there has been accidents in the past. And the important thing, first of all, is to make sure that the people who are involved as participants understand that there are risks involved. And I'm sure that they do, because they talk about it in the same way we are right here. Uh, that they know there is a lot of advantage to be gained from the standpoint of knowledge and experience and so forth. And so they are willing to accept that risk and uh, they know what they're getting into. Uh, whereas a person uh, on the street uh, does not have that background. It does not know all of the work that goes into making sure that it's as safe as at all possible. All of the backup alternatives that are available in case of a problem. And uh, the people involved do know about those things and yet are still willing to take some reasonable amount of risk in, involved in their activity. So it, it, education is the important thing. So you, you, you're going to go up. You know there's some risk involved. You're willing to accept that. Uh, yeah, and I uh, similarly, I'm a very uh, you know statistics-based analyst when it comes to uh, you know risk-return analysis, uh, and uh, you know I think uh, you know uh, with either space program, I'd be very happy to participate. But especially uh, the Russian Soyuz program, uh, you know, for decades now has had an exceptional uh, track record, and so uh, I actually feel I, I don't I don't think that I'll feel any real trepidation, you know, even on launch day uh, associated with safety. Uh, having been to space yourself, mm -hmm. what advice will you give him the day he goes up? Uh, not a lot of advice. He doesn't need really very, very much. <laughs> what will you say to him then? But I say, uh, uh, good luck, um, hope you enjoy every moment of it, and we'll be waiting for your return to uh, really build on all of the things that you have just accomplished. 
Again, Owen and Richard Garriott. I'm Forbes adventurer Jim Clash. To read my column, pick up Forbes magazine or click on Forbes.com slash adventurer. And thanks for watching the Forbes.com video network.